Next up on this uh, on this uh, track is uh, the folks from Aircall. Um, Xavier and Raphael are going to be talking about from product to marketplace with uh, Correct. APIs. Welcome How are you, to Russ? I'm very well. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? Where are you based? I'm in Denver. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Where are you guys? Uh, I'm actually based in New York, but I, I decided to go to a Florida to a COVID capital, so I flew to uh, Florida. <laughs> I'm trying to get COVID, but uh, yeah, yeah get it. After, you know, surviving it in New York, <laughs> you're just going through the second wave of it all in Florida. That's a great strategy. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> awesome. All well, right. let's get stuck straight in. Um, I uh, if you guys have slides to present, um, let's just make yes. sure that all works, and then I will pass it over to you. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Yes, we can. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, I guess we're going to do a Q&A session at the end, so we'll try to wrap everything up in 20 minutes. Uh, right. So first of all, uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, attending this talk. Uh, hopefully, you're going to like talking about product, marketplace, APIs, because uh, that's what this topic is going to be about. And we're going to talk about how, at Erco, we grew an ecosystem from 15 applications to more than 90 plus application in less than three years. So first of all, I uh, just want to introduce you, Raphael, who's going to be presenting this hey. talk with me today. Uh, is the uh, manager of the app ecosystem and myself, I'm Xavier. I'm uh, the co-founder of Erkel on the technical part. And now I'm uh, a DevRel at Erkel. Real quick, uh, Erkel is a uh, cloud-based phone system for sales and support team. Uh, we are integrated with all like kind of business business tools that companies are using, like Salesforce, Slack, uh, Intercom, et cetera. Uh, and qu some quick metrics on this. We have now more than 5,000 customers, uh, 350. We raised around $100 million in less than six years, and we're still doing a 2x year uh, over year growth uh, at our stage, which is pretty cool. And we just raised the, uh, the Series C's like a month ago, I think. On the mission of the product, uh, that's going to be important for this talk, so that's why I'm talking about it right now. Um, but the first step of uh, our mission is to build the best phone system ever. So we want something to be easy to set up, simple to use, but really powerful. So that's what we've been doing for six years. And now we're going to add the second step of the product. And we've been working on this for actually a few years now. Uh, the second step is the integration part um, with the ecosystem for voice. So we want to have like the, uh, the phone integrated with all the tools. Uh, once again, like all the CRMs, all, all the help desk, et cetera. And the third step of the record chip is what we're calling the augmented conversation. So think of uh, call transcription, sentiment analysis, et cetera. And today, of course, we're going to focus on voice as an integration. So the ecosystem for voice and what we're doing and the different steps we've done to build this ecosystem for voice. So this talk is going to be in three different parts. The first part uh, is how we put strapped the ecosystem back in 2015. Second part is how we got our first partners building things on top of us. And the third step is today, uh, how we scaled uh, the marketplace and the next step we're going to do. So let's start. Let's get started with uh, how we bootstrap uh, the ecosystem. Uh, funnily, our code is actually built on top of different platforms like Twilio, Voxbone, Stripe, AWS, etc. So, like building an ecosystem is actually part of our DNA. We are part of a bigger, um, bigger ecosystem with AWS and Twilio. So we wanted to like be part of this and uh, uh, a, um, able like give the possibility to people to actually build things on top of us. So back in 2015, we understood that uh, business tools needed to be integrated together. And at that time, the phone was not integrated with anything. The phone was only a big black uh, old box uh, put on your uh, desktop and was not integrated with any of the tools you were using. And also when you integrate your uh, tool with all the other tools out there, um, it actually increased the customer retention and bring like more uh, customers to um, to your product thanks to the others marketplace. But like building this ecosystem was not as easy as we thought, and that's like the baby Xavier like five years ago who thought that it was super easy to do, but actually it's not. So we had a few challenges. The first one is 
uh, we only had actually 50 customers, which was not a lot at all. Uh, and nobody knew us, of course, the use case of the platform and the product we built was very limited. Uh, we started building these products in 2014, so only one year ago before having this kind of vision. And last but not least, we had no public API. And actually, like having no public API was maybe the only thing I could start fixing. So we jumped on that problem right away and we start building an API. So in May 2015, we released the very first version of our public API with very basic features to create, read, update, and delete the main resources available on Erco. And we were like super excited and super proud of it. So I actually called my mom. I told her the story of the public API. She did not understand anything. Uh, but she was like super excited and just like our customers actually who were also super excited because they started using the public API as a new feature to build custom analytics. Uh, they build like integration with their custom CRM uh, and also like they started customize their own workflow thanks to the public API. So that was like a good chance for us and we got people excited to use it. The second step is we actually used this public API to build our first integration. So all the integration that you can see that you can see on the screen here were built by us. Uh, we built the Salesforce integration, the HubSpot integration, the Zapier, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we built that thanks to our public API. That was really, really good. Uh, that was a really good exercise for us because it allows us, allowed us to create some sort of framework. Um, that we were able to reuse then to just like create more and more integrations. And then in 2017, the magic happens. We got our first partner built application with people with from Pysing, Gorgias, Customer, and Nociara. They were using the public API that we built uh, in some like hacky way, let's say, to make their integration work. The only thing is that we didn't have any structure to help them. Like we didn't have any um, tutorial or resources available. We didn't have any marketplace at that time, but it was pretty like powerful for them because it allowed them to bring a phone, like the phone feature in their products. And thanks to that, we got some business in return. So that was pretty, pretty cool. So actually now that we had the first partners in 2017, I kind of allowed myself to start a dream like, what if someone could build a business on top of us at some point? That would be amazing. Just like Echo was built on top of AWS, Twilio, Voxbone, et cetera. Why not having someone at some point building a business on top of us? And that's something that Raphael is gonna talk about right after. But before jumping on uh, that part, uh, just wanna share with you some lesson that we learned on that very specific moment of the journey. The first one is do it yourself. Um, do it yourself and start building the integration by yourself. So that's gonna showcase kind of your products. Uh, and also you can be present on their marketplace. Like the Salesforce marketplace is a very, very good tool to get some traction out of it. Second uh, lesson is never say no. So let the partners hack your public API. They will bring you business and features you don't have time to build, just like PySync, which is the very first partner we had. They built a contact sync between Erco, the product, and whatever other products you wanna use. So we're never going to build a contact sync feature. PySync did it for us. And the last one is don't forget that an API is an interface. That is really important. So you wanna have as many features available on your products inside your API. So each features available in your product must be or should be inside your API as well. That's for me something that is really important. And in SaaS, don't forget that developers are users of the product, not only paying customers. So now that we saw all of that, let's see how we got like traction from uh, more and more partners. Thank you, Xavier. Yeah, so how did we get uh, to that second stage where partners were building application on top of us. Well, first, we needed to define a vision uh, around that. Uh, as, as we mentioned, we didn't really have, uh, it was a surprise that partners built an integration on top of us. And so we set that milestone, that kind of symbolic milestone for Airflow, uh, where during those uh, product uh, updates, product meetings, we said, uh, we need to get to a hundred plus integration. And it shouldn't be, all of those integrations built by Airco, we should actually reverse the trend where in the past we had 13 integrations built by Airco, two by partners or something like this. We need to go to 70% of our integrations built by our partners, by developers, and the rest 
that we host and maintain. And so we started to go on that journey and went to bootstrap that 100 plus integration vision again. Um, so the first thing we did is map out the whole ecosystem of partners we could integrate with. We were a SaaS product in telephony. You can understand the jobs to be done with telephony. You can understand the companies in the space. And so we did this big Excel spreadsheet, uh, maps all the companies that we think we could be partner with. And we went out, actually went out and reached out uh, to thousands of companies seeing how we could partner. So identifying the right companies, but classifying them was important. So we broke the companies into different categories. Um, when you think about integration with a SaaS product, you can think about the different tools that people use and how do these tools could interact together. So even from scratch, it's fairly easy to categorize different products in various categories and then pitch the value of an integration between those two products or apps that could be built. Uh, of course, some categories were more mature than others. And so we had a prioritization framework, a prioritization framework based on the size of the companies we were reaching out to, the overlap between our customer base, or the assumed overlap, the go-to market that we had in common, the maturity of their partnership program, how willing we, would, we were thinking that they would be to build with us, and also their broader software category, because we knew that our API wasn't fully equipped to handle all of the use cases we had in mind, and we still had things to develop on the product. So we went out, we started doing outbound, and we kind of like, uh, did things that don't really uh, scale at this stage to get our first uh, partners to build on top of us. Second, um, as we did that motion of outbound, we tried to create replicable use cases. Our API was still very much customer focused rather than partner uh, external developer focused. Uh, and so we wrote down guides, even PDFs for best practices on how to do a CRM and help desk integration as being a phone. That was the main category. And so we tried to advertise that uh, synthesize what uh, developers were already doing that worked really, really well. And we also wrote stories, marketing stories, uh, about our journey with some of these partners. Gorgeous customer that we're really proud that they started integrating with us years ago that are still very good partners of ours. Uh, we wrote stories to explain to the ecosystem uh, why they found value in API, why our products integrated together. Okay, uh, and so from a business perspective, that's how we approached it. But then uh, we also noticed that there were gaps in the product, in the API, and we try to fill that out. One thing, for instance, is that these partners in the CRM and help desk categories were using webhooks. Webhooks with telephony are really useful because they allow you to get real-time information about calls. Uh, and so these webhooks couldn't be created through the API. You had to set them manually, which is not acceptable for a partner. So that's like message that you see here. That's back then when we released that ability to create webhooks with the API, and that. Uh, is something uh, that partners still use today. Um, partners wanted to be listed in uh, what we call the air code dashboard, where you install your integration as the same level as the integration we built. And we didn't have the ability to do that with basic authentication with API keys. So we integrated the standard on the market, which is OAuth, and now everybody can integrate apps with air code in one click. So we improved the backend, we improved the structure, but we also thought from a product perspective, how can we make our phone more integrated? And so we created frameworks like the Inside Card. Uh, so the Inside Card is a framework that allows you to push information to Oracle in real time. And that's clearly made the CRM use case better because then I can get contact information in my phone as soon as I make an outbound call, or I receive an inbound phone call. Uh, and so we thought, what made us successful in the beginning? Well, it was to showcase to the market, showcase to developers what could be done. And we said, well, can we show the market that the phone system can actually integrate with a very popular platform, which is Shopify? No one was connecting a phone to Shopify at the time. And what we did is that we pulled other information from Shopify and we sent it uh, to the phone in that kind of productized framework. We, we got a lot of inspiration from Slack on the framework actually, um, where uh, let's say I'm a customer service agent at an e-commerce company and you're calling me. I don't have to ask you a bunch of information about who you are. I know who you are. I know what you bought at my store, and I can help you really quickly and have more engaged human conversations with you. And that helped us showcase the broader scope of possibilities to the SaaS ecosystem, to the developers, through a product framework. Now, uh, doing this uh, with the product and the business, we hit a few milestones that I'm very happy and proud to be able to share here. First, we launched our marketplace. 
Uh, the marketplace, it's not just a website. It's not just a tool uh, that, that you have there to promote your partners. It's actually the platform where your customers, your partners will interact and will connect. So this is where you're going to drive value to developers from your SaaS products to your customers. And, and it's really important that you grow the marketplace, that you grow the features of the marketplace as you scale the number of apps that join uh, that join it. It's also a great tool for your team to understand, like now we have apps coming out every other week. And so it's important to have the marketplace to centralize it. Um, another thing, and then uh, I think Zev will be really, really happy to share that, is that we had the first business uh, built on top of Airflow. So Phil, uh, from Postco uh, identified a gap in our offering uh, and said, there's no way to simply send surveys after a call in Airflow. And I want to build a company to do that. So when a phone call ends, I can get that information and send out the surveys based on some criteria. And so now it's thriving on the marketplace and we have the first company built on top of Airflow, but developers will be able to build more and more. And that's the motion uh, we're going to try to replicate, which is first, we're going to have companies that we're going to integrate with. Second, uh, attracting third party partners that are going to build on top of us, other SaaS companies, and then let developers create product new experiences as we extend our customer base and our capabilities. Um, so that's our journey in a nutshell. Um, you can see the growth on the, on the graph here. Uh, and we're pretty proud of this, but especially the fact that there are so many different categories uh, um, and that uh, there's more and more uh, growing over time. So um, so really, uh, that's how we bootstrapped it. But now, uh, most of these partners that you see on the far end of the graph, they come to us because they want to build integration and they want to join the marketplace. So despite starting with a lot of outbound and things that don't really scale, we reversed the trend and now are able to get some demand for people to build on top of us because the company grew and because we, we built an attractive platform. Uh, but it's, it's not over and there's a lot we're going to do to scale Further, uh, Xavier is going to explain that. But first, some lessons: do things that don't scale. That's the motto that you all know. If you know where you want to take the vision, and if you know how you're going to scale it in the end, don't be afraid to do a bit of manual stuff. I did a lot of that, uh, but uh, you can you can uh, improve that as you go with technology. Um, second uh, is the Lego box. I think we really see that in the way we build frameworks in the product. Bundle what you see working with customers, with partners into frameworks that are really, really easy to use and control the user experience as you grow so that partners and customers get a better uh, outcome out of this. Uh, the last one is Be Bold. Uh, we had companies like Microsoft Teams, Typeform, uh, JobAdder, which is a great applicant tracking system, the same size as us. Uh, in uh, 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 Australia, building uh, integration onto us. And so don't think that because you're starting, nobody will want to uh, build on top of your API. That's not true. If your product has value, if your API has value, uh, and there are some people that have a roadmap against that, you can match it and uh, uh, you can be ambitious in the partnerships you create. All right. So now that we've seen uh, how we can like bring this ecosystem together, let's see how we can bring this ecosystem to the next level. So what are uh, our current challenges right now? So first off, I just wanted to share this news that I uh, just joined the uh, ecosystem and the marketing team. So I was uh, part of the engineering team for six years. Uh, I built the first version of Oracle. I grew the engineering team from zero to 50 people. And now I'm actually switching gears and I'm going in the marketing team to help uh, this entire ecosystem strategy because I really think that it's key for us. And if we don't build the proper API, if we don't have the proper resources around it, we won't be able to grow as far as we want as a company. So joining the uh, marketing team with a new role, which is DevRel, and I'm going to try to kickstart all these initiatives at Aircall. So really excited about that. Then we are here to help developers. So one of the first thing we've done this year was to build a brand new website, a developer website with tons of different resources. We wrote so many tutorials. Uh, we revamped our entire API references documentation. So I'm really, really proud of the work that the team have done here. Uh, that's quite impressive what they've uh, been building actually. But now we have a brand new website with tons of documentation for developers, for partners, oriented for partners, so they can actually build application on top of us really easily. Uh, and of course, uh, when you do something for the devs, you want to bring a dark mode. So that's kind of an Easter egg that we built uh, and we had so much fun to, uh, to do this. 
one of the last thing initiative that we are launching, and that's something that we're launching this week, actually, it's the Airco Lab. So that's an uh, internal initiative where we want to kind of drive uh, innovation on top of our public API. So we, as Airco, we are going to use our public API and all the tools that we're giving to partners and developers to build free application that we're going to bring onto our own marketplace. So this one uh, is the first one. is It's the uh, weather app. Just uh, super simple. We are displaying the weather uh, to the customer you are in call with um, inside the phone. So that's kind of a way to hack the phone super easily. And we're using the all the public products that we're giving to partners. Some lesson learns uh, care. The first one is care about your developer experience. If the developer experience is great, then all the developers will know you and you will become kind of the uh, go-to platform to build things uh, on top of. And that's really exciting and you're gonna get more and more partners. Second one is listen to your partners. So actually paying customers are not the only users of your products. Make sure that the partners voice is represented uh, internally. So every time you have a meeting with salespeople, salespeople or marketing people, or product people, make sure to talk about the partners. That's really important for me, from me. And the last one, maybe the most important thing of this entire presentation, it's keep innovating. That's something that is really important to me. Use all the tools that you are giving to people to see how far you can push your product and how far you can push your company. So today we talked about the second stage of the rocket ship, which was voice as an integration. Um, but actually like all the integrations can be present in the three stages of the company. So if you want to build a best phone system, you're going to need integration. If you want to have augmented conversation, you're going to need uh, integration as well. So if you guys want to build anything with us, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, reaching out to Raphael uh, or myself. And thank you so much for uh, your time today. So happy to take any question if there's any. Um, otherwise, have a great day. Yeah, Thanks, no, everyone. I, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. I think you know, looking at the in over the past uh, couple of years, just with this integration strategy, and congrats on a fantastic C round <laughs> recently as well. I bet, Thanks, um, I bet that the, the integration strategy played a pretty big role in uh, in driving your valuation, your success over the past uh, few quarters. So, congrats. Thanks. Uh, the, uh, maybe just one one quick question. Like you, you touched on developer experience a few times. Um, like how, how have you started? How have you like built for developer experience, keeping that top of mind? What are some of the things you did to try and um, emphasize developer experience, just to sort of guide people that are going through this process? So maybe two things that are on top of my mind right now. The first one being. Um, we have simple resources in the Oracle product, one being the users, the teams, the number, the calls. And you want to make sure that developers understand the relationship to, of all those resources together, right? So actually, we built, uh, like, the API reference is really well written because when you read it, you actually understand all the relationship together. So that's one thing. You just want to make sure that kind of your database is really simple to use and simple to uh, read as a developer. Second thing is... Uh, what we share today, the inside card, which is some sort of framework. So as a developer, I don't have to care about the user experience of the end user. I just have to use one API endpoint, and that's going to be inside the phone with different metrics and different information in it. So you just have to use one endpoint, format your JSON, and then you have the uh, Echo user uh, experience, which is pretty pretty simple. And Slack, actually, so as Raphael was saying, uh, Slack did the same thing. So whenever you want to send a message, you just have to use one endpoint and then you have the same message all the time. And uh, yeah, I think one thing as well is, is uh, as, as Xavier mentioned at the end, um, um, supporting developers at any stage. Uh, so being there to enter, we try to reduce the distance between our company and the developers so that as a developer, you don't get roadblocks. If you're writing to us, if you're developing something with us, uh, we're trying to help you as fast as possible. Uh, with a very advanced product and technical uh, people. Uh, and we try to scale that as much as we can uh, as we grow the company uh, so that you can uh, keep that experience on par and not just talk to a wall. A lot of sense, for sure. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks, Raf. Thanks, Xavier. Stay safe in Florida. <laughs> Thanks, Russ. Um, and thanks everybody that's joined us for the, the last of this session. And we're going into a general session now. So um, we'll see everybody there. And thanks again. See you there. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye.